Hey, I'm Graham. Welcome back to my channel. So over the years, I've participated in a lot of different print exchanges. And so you end up having a stack of prints from each exchange, and they kind of, they've been sitting on shelves in drawers, and I wanted to have a way to kind of keep them contained and somewhere safe. So I thought I'd make a video showing how to make one of these small storage boxes. And these boxes aren't just for like print exchanges. You can really keep anything you want inside of them. So let's jump right into the video and I'll show you guys how I make it. And I'll put a link down in the description box as well to a video about print exchanges if you're curious about how those work and what they are. So when I was in college, I had a great printmaking instructor. And at the end of the semester, she had us all make a print for a print exchange and then made a portfolio box to store the prints in. And so for this video, I made a box that is similar to the one that I made back in school, but I modified it a bit. And then I changed the dimensions of it to fit the exchange that I need to store in this. So the outside has book fabric and it has an elastic strap that keeps it all secure. So when you open up the strap, the flaps open up and then your print exchange sits on the inside. And you can use one of these boxes to store anything, like I said. Keep it on a shelf or stack them and it, it won't bend the prints and they won't get ruined over time. So you can design your box however you want. This is the dimensions I use based on the print exchange that I want to store in here. So I have seven and a half inches tall, five and a half inches wide, and the print exchange when it's all stacked together is just under five, just under half of an inch. And so that's this half inch dimension right here. And you don't have to angle the lids like this. You can make it all square if you'd like. And the dimensions I have here, this 2.6, I just arbitrarily picked that. Just I thought it looked nice. Same with the three inches for this flap in here. So it's really up to you how you want to design it. But there's a couple things to keep in mind. You want the different lids to sit on top of each other when it's closed. So you want this, you know, the yellow one is the lowest lid. Then the green ones fold over on top of it. And then the red lid folds down on top of everything. And to do that, you have to make sure that the side panels are the correct height. So this gray side panel is the lowest, the lowest side. And over here, that's half inch. The magenta panel is over here. It's a little bit higher because you want these green panels to sit on top. So it's 0.6. So it's just 0.1 taller. And then the cyan panel in the back holds the lid. And so you want it to be as tall as all of this. And so that in my case is 0.7. And so they increment by 0.1 because that's the thickness of the material that I'm using is 0.1 inches thick. So if you're using thicker material, you'll have to make the increment between the panels higher. And you can pause here if you want to look at these dimensions a little bit longer. But you could do these panels curved, you could do interesting shapes, interlocking pieces. There's really a lot of options to it. I just did something really simple for this. So you can use my design or come up with your own. But the first step is going to be to transfer the dimensions onto a hardboard panel. So I picked up these pre-cut pieces online. They're a bit thinner than I would have liked. I'd suggest using at least an eighth inch thick board so they don't flex too much. And I'll add a list of items needed for this project down in the description box as well. The panels I got weren't 100% square. So I used a T-square and marked a straight line on one side. Then I measured all my dimensions off of it and went through and transferred all the shapes that I needed onto different panels. I also write with pencil what the piece is and what the dimensions are so I can keep track of all the pieces easily later on. I did all of my cuts with a matte board cutter since it's so much quicker. But you can also do the same thing using a straight edge and a sharp exacto blade. If you make X's or scratch out through the scrap pieces when you transfer the dimensions onto the board, it helps keep track of what's scrap and what's part of the box that you want to hang on to. After all my pieces are cut, I take a piece of book cloth and lay it face down on the table. Make sure it's a clean work area so you don't ruin the fabric side. You want to lay out the pieces onto the book cloth and make sure there's ample room all around the sides. I put an object on each piece to make sure it wasn't sliding around when I was fitting all the other pieces. So to begin gluing down the pieces, start with one of the larger panels. You want to spread a nice even amount of glue across the panel, making sure you get all the way to the edges. The glue dries fairly quickly, so you want to make sure you don't spend too much time on this. Maybe practice with a scrap piece first. After I glued the piece down, I put a weight on the panel and moved on to the next piece. When you place the next panel, Use a scrap piece of board as a spacer. You want to leave this gap so the fabric can bend without causing a clash between the boards. By using a scrap, you can ensure it's consistent throughout. I'm using acid-free PVA glue that's made for this type of project. It goes on white but dries clear and doesn't yellow with time. 
I'm just using a scrap of wood to apply it and another scrap for a palette. You can also use a brush if that works better for you. So now I go through the same steps with all the other panels, doing my best to line them up evenly and using the piece of scrap as a spacer between the pieces. Make sure when you put the glue down that you get all the way to the edge of the pieces because you want to make sure these really stick down. It's time to start cutting the book cloth down so we can wrap it around the panels. Make sure to use a fresh X-Acto blade since the material can fray and the cloth dulls the blade pretty quick. I use another scrap piece of board to make a consistent edge around the panels. I want the cloth to fold over and have about a half inch or so of area that I can glue down. If you don't leave enough area, it's tough to get it to hold down firmly. Now cut along the line that you just drew on the book cloth. There are many ways to fold the fabric over the board, but this is how I do it. You want to cut at an angle away from the corner and leave a small flat that will cover the corner. This method will keep the board from showing in the corners and also protect them a bit since there's some extra book cloth there. I work my way around the panels doing the corner cuts first, mainly because I'm nervous about how I'm going to do the inner folds because they're kind of complicated corners. When I get to the inner corners, I cut away from the flaps at an angle and then cut a small flap for the smaller ribs. Looking back, I probably could have done this another way, but there's no turning back at this point. After I finished cutting all the corners and flaps and it was ready to go, I used the bone folder to go ahead and crease the book cloth around the boards. So when I come back to glue it, I don't have to fight it at that point. And this also gives you a good idea of how I did all the corners. So I want to make sure that all the board is covered when I apply the inner cloth. But because of how I cut the inner ridges, there will be little triangles of book board showing through, which isn't good. So for each of these areas, I just cut a small sliver of cloth to cover it up. The material is thin, so it works out okay to layer it like this. So before you begin gluing, you want to make sure you have some sort of plastic or paper under the panels like this. So when you brush on the glue, you can get right to the edge without worrying about what's under it. But you also want to make sure the gluey part of the paper doesn't get onto the book cloth back. So using a scrap board, I apply glue to the small cover-up pieces I made, and then to one flap at a time, working my way around the board. Here's a close-up of one of the corners being glued down. I apply enough glue that it'll stick well, making sure to get all the way to the edge. And then I use a bone folder to crease the cloth and fold it over, working out any air bubbles and smoothing it down. PVA glue dries very quick once you press it down, so just stick it down, hold it for a second, and then you can move on to the next piece. So again, I apply glue to the strip and stick it down. I use the bone folder to press it into the seams between the panels. I apply glue to the flaps and fold them over, and then finally smooth it all down with a bone folder and move on to the next one. And then finally here I'm gluing down the last little flap and I can move on to the next step. So before I move on to covering the inside of the box, I need to secure the elastic strap to keep it closed. This is just a regular flat elastic that I got at the craft store. I start by measuring where I want to secure the strap. I chose one inches in from the corners, but it's up to you where you want it. 
So you want to cut through the board and through the cloth in the back. And you want to make the slot big enough for the elastic strap to slip through, but not too big that it just falls through. So we don't want the elastic to just stick out into the box. So I cut a rectangle the width of the cord and halfway through the thickness of the board. And then I peel away layers of the board until the slot is deep enough to hide the elastic strap. Make sure not to cut too deep and cut into the other side of the box and the book fabric. You just want to cut a few layers deep. And then I do the same thing to the other side. Again, making sure that I only do one peel off one layer at a time and keep checking to make sure it's deep enough. I feed the elastic through the slot from the outside. You'll need to use something to push the elastic through the small slot and then loop it around the box and feed the other end into the other slot. If you made the slots tight like I did, then you can keep adjusting the tension of the strap until it's how you want it before you glue it down. If the slots are too loose and allow the elastic to slide out when you're testing, you can glue one end into the pocket, let it dry, and then adjust the tension before gluing the other end. You want the straps snug enough to hold it tight, but not too tight that it warps the board or stretches out over time. Once you're happy with the tension, cut any excess and glue it down into the little pockets that you made. Make sure to let it fully dry overnight at least before you use the straps. Also, be sure before you glue that the strap is laying how you want and not twisted. Now we move on to the last step, adhering the inner book cloth. So take the second piece of book fabric that you have and lay it face down on your clean, glue-free work surface. I lay the box down on the cloth and mark out the long edges of the box. After marking those lines, I draw a second line, offset, inside a quarter of an inch. I want to have a slim gray edge exposed around the linen cloth. I drew a small arrow showing which line I want to keep, so I make sure I cut along the right one and don't get confused later on. Then I do the same thing for the short sides of the box. Mark the edges and transfer those lines onto the cloth. Then draw a line a quarter inch offset to the inside. Before you cut, put the box on one more time and make sure you measure it correctly and are ready to cut the correct lines. You don't want to risk ruining the book cloth. Using a straight edge, cut the cloth. I'm using a triangle that has a metal edge on it. Make sure to use a sharp blade so you get a nice clean cut. This is the edge that will show every time you open the box, so you want it to look good. So work your way around all the cuts, and this is what you should end up with. I line up the inside panel and then use a bone folder to press it into the grooves around the center piece. So I can line it up easily after I add glue. And also as a second chance to make sure that I cut everything correctly and there's the right gap shown. Here I spread a layer of glue onto the center piece of the box and put the liner in. Make sure to get the glue right up to the edges and work out any air bubbles once you put the fabric down. I don't cut the ends of these panels to the correct length yet until after I glue down the first few segments. When you press the book cloth into the slots between the panels, it makes the end of the book cloth come closer to the center. It shortens up. So I want to wait and trim that later once I have the first part glued in. Now that the first small piece is glued down, I can flip it over and trace the outline onto the liner cloth and cut it to match that shape. I then flip it back over and use a scrap board to protect the box. I cut the sides to have the correct amount of gray showing. This was the first panel, so I had to do a little bit of cleanup, but I got better with the next three. After the fabric is cut and I was happy with the fit, I apply glue and use a piece of wax paper to protect the box when I spread the glue. I hit all the seams and the edges with a bone folder and moved on to the next flap. I repeat this process on the other sides, apply glue to the first panel and press it into the grooves, and then cut the flap to size and glue it down.
you can see these flat sides are much easier to mark and cut for the right length. There's no rule saying you have to use the angled sides like I did, so you can make it all square if you want and make it easy on yourself. And here's the final side. I trace the shape onto the cloth and cut it with an X-Acto blade and glue it down. And I'm finally finished. So I put the box flat on a work surface and then use books and a box to weigh it down overnight to keep everything compressed and let it dry. And so here's the finished box, ready to go. And so the elastic holds it closed. Open it up and all your prints, your photos, or whatever you want to store, just fit right inside. All right, so that wraps up how to make one of these storage boxes. I really appreciate you guys watching. There was a lot of steps to make one of these, so I tried to cut the time down as best I could. There's a lot of footage. So if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comment box. I'll be happy to answer. And so if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up down below. I really appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.